very good good evening to you uh, because we have now morning in germany thank you for the invitation uh, today our topic is is going uh, to uh, to the question how to manage patients who have really very complex anatomy and bifurcation lesions belong to this complex uh, lesion set, uh, how to manage such patients if they have additionally high bleeding risk um, situation. Um, so, um, you know this, um, you know this slide, uh, we have to find uh, finally some uh, area here where we have low ischemic events, but not really increase of bleedings. Um, if we go if we treat our patients with duct, and this is a standard after PCI. And um, we know from, from many, many studies, uh, from longer term studies, uh, that if we have really very complex anatomy and very, very high vascular uh, risk, uh, then we have more events compared to bleeding. However, in last uh, five to 10 years, uh, we, we saw that bleeding is, uh, bleeding is in general more and more um, significant and um, important topic. And we know also from, from um, many studies, and this is one from circulation uh, many years back, but we know this if we stop um, therapy, if we stop DAPT, then we have a definitely significantly increased risk uh, for stent thrombosis. So um, uh, according to the um, current data from our in, uh, current um, summary from guidelines, European guidelines, we know we have to treat patients uh, with stable coronary um, artery disease after PCI without indication for OAC and NOAC um, with aspirin and clopidogrel. And um, if we have very high bleeding, then maybe um, just one month, but this is to be C um, indication. And um, you could also use in daily practice uh, some scores. What, what we use, uh, what we definitely uh, implemented in our center is precise DAP score. It's quite easy to, um, to manage this score and then you can make an um, adi additional dis uh, decision how long uh, should DAP be performed. And if you go to uh, patients with unstable coronary artery disease and indication for um, anticoagulation, you see that's, um, that's again a huge problem. We don't have really enough clear data. And what is really very important, if you have, uh, you should never do a triple with ticagrelor and prasugrel aspirin and uh, anticoagulant th therapy. This is really, um, we, we saw few such cases in, in daily routine. So really increased risk for bleeding. And of course, um, acute coronary syndrome uh, is a top, very important topic because especially in Asia, you have many patients with acute coronary syndrome. So um, this is, uh, if you don't have high risk bleeding, so you can go up to 12 months with dual anti antiplatelet therapy if you have uh, higher risk, high risk, high bleeding risk. So you could go up to six, uh, three to six months. And it was uh, the question, can we use some specific sense uh, who maybe um, uh, bring us to better results according uh, to the lower risk uh, for bleeding? Maybe we could be very sufficient on a treatment and uh, if I uh, mention, we have now um, to go with uh, studies to show really um, benefit for one month adapt therapy after PCI. And uh, Onyx one global study was a prospective multicenter study um, who, which um, investigated more than 1,000 patients with uh, in the study arm with uh, Resolute Onyx, uh, just to show 
the one month DAPT therapy is after Resolute Onyx therapy safe for our patients. And the comparison was uh, done with BioFreedom, uh, which was um, one of the best stands uh, for, for this topic, short DAPT. And uh, which patients were uh, included? You see, in majority of cases, all the patients uh, with age over 75 years, um, then renal failure was really very important, anticoagulation, planet surgery, anemia, uh, hospitalization for bleeding uh, within one year per PCI, per and also some uh, problems with uh, liver disease. The study could show that on, in, in the ONX1 global study, the results were very clear after using ONIX stents, we had primary safety endpoint cardiac death, MI, and stent thrombosis um, in 17.1% after biofreedom, 169 So non-inferiority endpoint was uh, met. So it means ONIX, uh, resolute ONIX stent is safe um, as uh, biofreedom, which was primary the stent for such patients. But, uh, and here you can see also um, in few uh, Kaplan-Meier curves, the results uh, for um, combined endpoint, no difference uh, over 20 to 24 months. So two years follow up, uh, cardiac death, no significant difference, um, MI, no significant difference, and stent thrombosis, no significant difference, but numerically some trend to better results uh, after resolute uh, onyx um, stent implantation. So it is really a long-term follow-up now for two years. And it was uh, interesting uh, how stents are working and you see a procedural success rate of device success, 93% versus um, nearly 90% uh, by biofreedom. This was significantly. And um, there was allowed to um, uh, make crossover between study arms. So you see, um, there was also a huge difference. Uh, so much more patients uh, with biofreedom uh, stand were uh, had crossover to on extent. And if you just make this landmark analysis after one month, you see there was still a very good uh, clinical follow-up for both stands uh, with some trend numerically and better um, results for Onyx. So this was really very reassuring. And finally, we have, of course, if you go in the, every day to the cath lab, we have to treat around 20 to 30% of such patients. Um, we have to treat bifurcation lesion. And of course, they, they as we saw, many, many lectures and uh, last lecture from Japan, uh, there was a complex geometry, sideburn occlusion should be avoided, and this is a common complication. And of course, um, optimal stand optimization is, 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 is most important issue. And if we just go to the left main, we know around 70, 75% of left mains have a really diameter larger 4.5 up to 7, uh, 5, uh, 0.75 um, millimeter. And this is, I think, important point to implant stand with the option to avoid malaposition. And of course, uh, left main disease uh, is usually um, in majority of cases distal with distal location. And of course, of course, um, there was limited um, evidence. But now we have we have now data from um, from ABC main study, which was presented yesterday yesterday by our ABC president, Professor Stankovic, with really unbelievable results. Um, so if we just take a look to the patient's history, and this is um, just case report. Um, it's an older um, male with a chronic kidney disease with uh, angiodysplasia of colon, and um, that patient is symptomatic, and that's why, because um, there was um, evidence of uh, anterolateral ischemia patients got 
coronary angiography, and you can see here there was a problematic bifurcation, uh, LAD, and first quite large diagonal branch. Um, some people could say, okay, this is maybe not really from angiographic point of view so significant lesion. There was a circ with uh, some uh, lesion. There was uh, one more lesion in um, the right corner artery. So as you can see, uh, you could really go here with FFR management and uh, to evaluate what is really uh, significant. And the right was, according to the FFR wire um, uh, measurement, okay, but um, here, bifurcation LAD diagonal branch definitely with uh, pathological pathological flow. So we have to um, go ahead. Uh, you can go, of course, with imaging, check um, anatomy. You see some calcific plaques, eccentric, and um, even in the bifurcation uh, region, definitely much more um, fibrocalcific uh, plaques. And decision was done here to go with uh, Dickey crush because diagonal branch was quite large. There was a lot of disease in LAD. So this is um, also a possible way to go in this case. You could also go with Dickey uh, colot. It will be also option. But um, take a look how this case was done. This is a really a mini, mini crash here, only two millimeters protrusion into the main branch stent uh, in the side branch was um, implanted. But a uh, crash first crash. Uh, and uh, if we go uh, forward, uh, you see then um, rewiring, maybe just to show you, um, it should be not really in the Carina region uh, located the crossing more in the middle of the stand of proximal. F first kissing, um, that's clear. Then a stand in the main branch pot rewiring and uh, finally um, second kissing and um, final pot. And this is uh, now final uh, result. So you can manage uh, such patients very nicely uh, going by um, also complex lesion. But in this case, you have to be definitely sure there is no malapposition because you know, there was a bleeding patients. And if you have to uh, stop, if you have to stop anticoagulation, uh, adapt therapy, then uh, it will be a huge problem. You saw this one slide to begin my presentation. So um, after on extent, uh, which was here used, uh, because then we have a very clear um, option to go just for one month with that therapy. But in IVUS, you see there is a really perfect position. So no malapposition, everything is perfect. And you could be quite sure this patient will be treated uh, very perfectly. So in general, in high-risk bleeding patients, uh, especially for bifurcation lesions, keep it simple. If possible, try to um, avoid double stenting. A provisional uh, stenting is, is definitely uh, the, the best option. However, if you have to if manage a very complex and difficult anatomy, um, pay attention to choice of the stent. Um, then optimal uh, stent optimization is really, um, really uh, most important point. And uh, we should really try, um, try to get a perfect result uh, without um, or any or only minimal malaposition. This is, I think, the crucial, most important point, not only in this case, but in general. And uh, of course, stand design uh, play a role. Imaging, as show it here in this case, is uh, very crucial to show, to demonstrate the result is perfect, no malaposition, etc. And here, um, use of drug uh, after DS. Um, you have here possibility uh, to stop that after uh, at what one month if needed if a patient's uh, 
could uh, have a clinically uh, important significant bleeding. And uh, Professor Stankovic showed yesterday um, uh, excellent data from ABC main study here, just a, a summary a uh, a slide for um, clinical data at one year, you see um, excellent uh, data uh, for onyx in, in complex uh, bifurcation lesions and stem thrombosis only uh, 1.7, 1.3. I um, would say thank you for the invitation and I'm ready for discussion. Thank you so much.